Now at this point in the course, we'll start our serious look at derivatives. And derivatives is the main topic in first semester calculus. And we'll be uh, taking a graphical look at derivatives to start off, which means we'll be looking at the xy plane, the coordinate plane, and we'll be uh, looking at functions graphed in the plane. And that gives us a visual picture, what's sometimes called a geometric representation of the algebraic function that we're dealing with. And uh, what, what we're doing in this class is sometimes referred to as analytic geometry. And that's a good term. You might have had a, a course in Euclidean geometry where you do formal proofs. And of course, that's great stuff. Uh, but analytic geometry is geometry without formal proofs. We're not doing a compass and a, a straight edge constructions and things like that. We're dealing with uh, the concepts algebraically. And so some of the examples that you've already dealt with, no doubt, are things such as the distance formula. If you have two points, say A and B, you can calculate the distance between them. These, these points uh, would have coordinates, numbers, and the distance basically would be the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So you have the, the change in x and the change in y, and you can calculate the, the, the length of that line segment. So here's this geometric figure, basically, a line segment. But we're doing some algebraic work here to calculate an exact n numerical distance. You can also find the midpoint m. The midpoint would have coordinates that are average of the x and y values of points a and b. So the point here is that algebra can be used on these geometric figures. And the, the coordinate plane, this xy plane, is really the, the thing that intellectually links algebra and geometry together. And it's named after René Descartes. It's sometimes called the Cartesian plane, or the Cartesian coordinate system. And that's named, of course, after René Descartes, the French philosopher and mathematician who was a contemporary and in some ways a competitor w with Newton, although Newton got the math and physics a lot more correct than Descartes did. But Descartes made, did make significant contributions in philosophy and in math, and the coordinate plane is one of them. Descartes and also Fermat, famous mathematician Pierre de Fermat. Descartes and Fermat were using the coordinate plane to study functions, which were just beginning to be studied. And you're familiar with functions, but that they weren't always around. It was at this time that functions were, were just beginning to be studied. And, and uh, Leibniz is actually the person who coined the term function. And Leibniz, as you know, is one of the co-inventors of calculus along with Newton. Now, when we use a coordinate plane, we get a geometric picture of an algebraic function. So just as a real simple example, look at this one. y equals x cubed plus 1. So here's a, a simple function. And if we have some uh, coordinates marked, let's just say these are each in units of 1, then this is just an x cubed graph shifted up 1. So it's going to go through this point, going to go through 1, 2, and uh, negative 1, 0, and it will look something like this. And the point is that we can see it. We don't just have this equation, we have a picture. And one of the things that you can obviously see is you can see the height of the function at any x value. You can see the value of the function at any x value. But you can also see from the graph how the y value is changing as the x value changes. So you can see the slope at any point. And that's what you need to be thinking about when you're thinking about derivatives. So say you just take a point on the graph like this point right here. You're not just concerned with the x and the y values at that point, but we're also concerned with the slope of the curve at that point. How steep is that little tiny section of the graph at that point? And with all that in mind, we'll take a look at some derivatives graphically. We'll, we'll look at functions, and we'll see how we can look at a graph of the function and make another graph, a sketch at least approximately, of another function, which would be the derivative of the given function. And that's what we'll do next.